I want to say a couple things right here if I can. I want to remind you to please remain in your car for the duration of the service. Uh, please be respectful of your neighbor. Uh, also, I do want to remind you, we've come here to worship the Lord. And uh, so you can worship Him sitting there in your car. The Holy Spirit of God gets a hold of you and you just feel like you need to have a spell. By all means, worship God right there where you're sitting at. He sees you. Amen. He sees you right there and I'm glad. But also, I want to let you know, please, please remain in your car, remain in your car after the service. You will be directed uh, from the men that have the vests there, and I appreciate those young men helping us out, members here of the church. They will direct you. We don't want any fender benders. So please remain in your car there, and uh, they'll show you which way you need to go. And uh, again, thank you for being here, being the Lord's house, and being with God's people. Well, we're outside, but we're still on His property. Amen? And uh, such a blessing. We're going to have a word of prayer, and uh, going to ask Brother Randy there. He's going to sing us a song. And uh, so you ask the Lord to get you ready to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen? And I might have to make some adjustments on this thing here. It's... Uh, how about right there? That's not too noisy right there. How about that? Not too bad. But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, seek Him during this time. Father, as we come before You in the name of Christ, thanking You so much, Lord, for giving us this opportunity. A beautiful day. Lord, we know that the Word of God says that this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are thankful for everyone that is gathered here today. Father, I pray your blessings upon everyone. We are praying that the Spirit of God will be poured out in a mighty way. Father, we know, dear God, if there's someone lost in our midst right now, they can be born again sitting in their car. Father, we know, dear God, if there's one struggling, Lord, they're hurting, they need help from God. Lord, that you can meet their needs right where they are at. Thank you, Father, that you're in control, and we thank you for such a time as this. I pray in the name of Christ that everything will be done. It'll magnify the Savior and exalt Him. And again, Father, I pray that the Spirit of God, Lord, it would be upon us today, and we would please you and everything that we say. It would be a blessing unto you and bring a smile to your face. Lord, edify the church. And again, we are thankful for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen, brother. And I want to give him thanks and give him praise. I appreciate everyone being here. I'll say this as well. I appreciate everyone that's made this possible. I do appreciate Brother John Hill and the young men that have helped uh, lay everything out here, made sure everybody didn't get uh, in a fender bender or get wrecked or anything like that. And uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate him recording. Appreciate Brother Randy, amen, allowing us to borrow his PA system and uh, to be able to preach the Word of God and sing the gospel songs. I tell you, God's good to us, amen. He is good to us, and I, I appreciate the people of God working together. You know, we can get a lot done for God if we are together, amen, if we are together. So uh, hopefully you got your Bibles. Who's got your Bibles this morning? Amen, amen. All right, well, let's take your Bibles out and turn to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter number 13. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 13. And I uh, want this to be a blessing to you there. I uh, felt the Lord uh, dealing with us in a different message, but uh, this is what He had for us to preach here this morning. So I want it to truly be a blessing to you. I hope everybody's doing well and everybody's staying safe. And... Um, let the Lord speak to your heart. I know you're in a different setting right now, and I know some of you are battling your children, and I know some of you right now maybe even battling sleep, And uh, but I encourage you, you're in a different setting, but God's still the same God. 
He's still the same God. And, uh, and I pray that you would please give heed to the Word of God. So we're in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Begin our reading in verse number 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse number 1. The Bible says, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourself also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all things, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Praise God for that. Verse number 6, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have rule over you, who, uh, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Verse number 8, the Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Father, thank you for the reading of the Holy Word of God. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to stand here today and to declare what thus saith the Lord. I am asking of you, Lord God, for the same power and the same liberty, nor the same fresh anointing. Lord, we're asking of you right now that the Spirit of God would have His will and His way. Use us, Almighty God. I pray that our words will be clear. I pray, dear God, that the message will be sound. Lord, we're praying for the hearts of everyone that is here underneath the sound of our voice, that, Lord, that your word would find a home. Father, that you would have your will and your way. Father, that you would get all the glory, honor, and the praise. Father, we do ask all this in the blessed name and beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. So here we are, church. We're in the last chapter of the book of Hebrews. And in the last chapter here of the book of Hebrews, Paul is encouraging his writers. And I believe that Paul is the writer of this book here. And I'm not trying to stir up trouble with anyone, but that's just who I believe wrote it there. But nonetheless, he's trying to encourage his readers with giving us two words that draw our attention here in Hebrews 13. Those two words are, let and remember. Let and remember. They are provoking words. They are words that ignite us to be fervently engaged into. May I say this right here? These were not random words. These were not random uh, sentences that Paul wrote here in the last chapter here. There was a purpose behind every verse in the Word of God we know, but also in these chapters here. Paul knew that the Christians, the believers, were faced with perilous times. He wrote this book along the same line, the same time here, as he wrote 2 Timothy chapter 3. And 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 1 says, Know this, that in the last days shall be perilous times times where men shall be lovers of themselves. And church, you know that we're living in a time where man is loving themselves more than they're loving God, than they're loving their neighbor, and this virus has surely brought out the true nature of man, which is selfishness. May I say this to us today? Listen now. He's telling them these words, and he's engaged, and he's telling them to let and remember the church now say this, listen now. Listen to me clearly. Just in one month's time, church, this world has shut down. In one month's time, this world has been brought to its knees by a microscopic virus and has put people on hold. It's caused people to stop and it's caused people to really show their true colors. I mean, we have people that are hating other people for a roll of toilet tissue. We have people being mean 
mean toward others that are only trying to love on them and serve them over a loaf of bread. I tell you this here today, we're seeing the total depravity of the heart of man unfold before our eyes that man is lost without God and man needs a Savior. And I've got good news for you today. His name is Jesus and he'll save whosoever. Listen to me, church. He said, in this time, let us do these things here. Let us remember those two things. That word, let. That word, let, it means permit. It means to allow. It is to allow an action to take place. Now, I want to draw your attention to three things that he said to let. He told the bride, he's telling the church, God is telling us today to allow this action to take place. To what? Verse number one, let brotherly love continue. Oh yes, there's a time, and it is this time, and it was even before this time here, that brotherly love should continue. And God tells us in his word, he said, how can you say that you love man, love God and you hate your brothers? First John chapter 4 tells us all about that. And God's commanded us that we love one another. We love our brothers and we show that. Church, may we be engaged in loving one another. Being there for one another. Aiding one another. Caring for one another. I'm glad we may be confined to our houses, but I'm glad that we can break out our phones we can break out our cell phones we can pull out a piece of paper and we can still be in touch with one another amen let brotherly love continue listen to me on this here he says permit it allow that action to take place love is an action it's not just words no Jesus said hey I'll, I'll prove your love on this right here he said man honors me with their mouth but their heart is far from me brotherly love let it continue there and loving one another but also we see this now this permitting this allowing that action to take place also in verse number 5 the Bible says let your conversation be without covetousness oh yes we're not trying to offend anyone this morning but I'm telling you the truth just like if we were in the church house I'm going to tell you the truth right here on the church porch hallelujah that godly conversation that conversation that God wants us to have a clean conversation not a filthiness there there's so much lies being told today there's so much ungodly words coming out of the mouth of people and unfortunately it's coming out of the mouth of the people of God but God Almighty said for you and I to have a content heart there to have a conversation that what church that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us hallelujah what is he saying Christ Jesus is there listening to every single word that we are saying the Savior hears you today and oh, some of you I already talked to this morning, and I'm glad that you had a good conversation. But when you leave this parking lot and you go back home, what kind of conversation are you going to have then? Is it going to be filthiness? Is it going to be of anger? Is it going to be a backbiting? Is it going to be a complaining? No, the Bible tells us to be content. Hallelujah. I tell you this here today, I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world can give me today. Why? Because this world here has realized that football doesn't satisfy. Baseball doesn't satisfy. None of these things of this life here below. Only Jesus Christ gives contentment. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. He said He'll never leave us nor forsake us. What a promise that is. And we need to be on guard of our conversation. Every idle word is being recorded, child God. Every thought is being recorded. Don't think just because you're all alone, you are alone. No, there's God. There's God, amen. He's there. May I say this as well, and i got to hurry up here. He said, let, allow this action to take place and continue in loving one another. Our conversation to be clean. But also said this right here, we didn't read it. 
it, but we're going to turn there, there, through verses 9 through 13, he talks about, in verse number 9, be not cared about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Now, may I say this to a church, it's not the time to forsake the established doctrines and the doctrine of grace. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, there's people that are looking for something new. They're looking for something they never heard. They're looking for something that's strange to their ears. But the Bible tells us that we are to be not cared about with strange doctrines, but stay tr true to stay true to the faith. Stay true to the established doctrine. Say, what are you saying, preacher? In Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible tells us about this, about this doctrine that is established. That doctrine that's established is the Holy Word of God. And the Bible tells us about this, that there's only what? One body. There's only one church. Amen. There's only one church. It's the body of Christ. I thank God for the local assembly. But I'm telling you this right here, whether you like it or not, my dear friend, the church, the bride of Christ is bigger than our local assembly. I thank God for it. Now, I'm not bashing it, praise God. But I'm just letting you know that there's a doctrine here that we should not forsake and we should not be drawn away by divers ones. The Bible said there's one body. There's one spirit. Oh, yes, the Holy Ghost of God. Aren't you glad, child of God, that we don't have to pray that the Holy Ghost come and live on the inside of us on the day of salvation? He took up residence. Amen. He took up residence and stays and dwells on the inside of every believer. Praise God. There's only one spirit there. There's only one hope. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who's above all and in you all. Thank God here, church. It's not the time. We are to allow that action to take place. The established doctrines, praise God, let them be. Amen. Let them be. But i got to hurry. Boy, i tell you, there's so much more I want to talk about here. These two words, he said, let us, let remember. And that word remember, it means to be mindful of. And some of you know me. You know me a little bit better than others do. And boy, my, my, my memory is not the greatest. If I don't write it down, I'll forget. I just know that's just the way it is. But I'll say this to you today. The Bible says for us to remember. That is to be mindful of. It is to recall to the mind not to forget. God told the children of Israel over there in Deuteronomy chapter 6. You mark it down, go back to the house and read that chapter when you have time. You need to listen to the words I'm about to tell you now. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, He told them, I'm going to let you cross over. And when you cross over into the promised land, I will bless you. You will be fruitful. You'll have houses. You'll have lands. You'll have all that you need. Your house, according to the Word of God. God said it would be full there. But he said, you need to beware. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 12, he told him, he said, do not forget who has done this for you. Church, it wasn't a month ago. The United States of America had the best economy in the world. The stock market was up. Unemployment was at the lowest. And boy, you've seen all these businesses open. You've seen all these wonderful things taking place. And now look at it. I ain't trying to depress you. I ain't trying to drag you down. But I'm just telling you this right here. God said, do not forget where your blessings come from. God forbid that we forget. We must remember, church, in this time, there's some things we must remember. Number one, we must remember the family of God. He said, let brotherly love continue. We must remember who we are a part of. It's not an island. It's not just an individual. We are a body made up of many members here and we must not forget one another. We must be there for one another, loving them. Why? Because I remember this here. May I say this to you, church? If the body is no good without the head. Amen. The body is no good without the head. And who is the head? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the head 
head of the body there. And had it not been for Christ, we would still be hopelessly lost. Had it not been for Christ, we'd still be on our way to a devil's hell. But I thank God that Jesus went to the old rugged cross. He shed his precious blood. He died on the cross. They buried him. And oh yes, oh Easter's about to come soon. Hallelujah. We'll be worshiping on resurrection day. And Christ rose on the third day. And he lives and he reigns forevermore. We must remember the saints. Remember the body that Christ died for. We're family. Hallelujah. Oh, I love that song. I can't do it justice, but I love it. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Oh, praise God, church. I'll tell you this, there's nothing like the family of God. We have our earthly families, and I appreciate them. But the family of God holds a special, special place in the heart of every believer. He said, let us remember. And also, i got to hurry up on this right here. Woo! In verse number 2, he said, don't we now? He said, let us remember. And the number 2, what I want to bring before you today is remember the saints, but also remember the strangers here. And verse number 2, the Bible says, forget not to entertain strangers. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible tells us in verse number 12 that there's a time in our lives that we were strangers to God. There was a time in our life we did not know Jesus Christ. We had nothing, no clue about redemption. We had no clue about the blood. We had no clue about the atonement. We had no clue about being forgiven of our sins and being placed into the body of Christ. I tell you this here today, now's not the time for us to forget about the lost. There's people that need Jesus. And now's better time than ever for us to tell them that there's a God who's real and loves them. He cares for them so much that He sent Jesus, Jesus Christ, to be the propitiation, all to be that ultimate sacrifice. May we not forget about the strangers. Now I know it talks about it may be entertaining angels unaware, and that is true, my dear friend. That is a <clears throat> possibility as well. But I want to draw to your attention that there's people lost and there's people dying, and they're still dying today. Not by this virus, but just by natural causes. People still dying today from cancer, still dying from uh, being shot by a pistol, still dying as we speak right now by natural causes, and they need Jesus. They need Christ. May we remember the stranger. But may I say as well in verse number 3, notice what the Bible says, Remember them that are in bonds, and remember that as bound with them, and then that suffer adversity, being yourself also in the body. Let us not forget about those that are hurting right now. People all around us are hurting. And I'm not even talking, don't think, don't think I'm talking about coronavirus hurting. I'm talking about life. There's mamas with broken hearts that are still crying for their babies to get right with Jesus. There's still daddies out there that's, that's hoping that that child will come home. There's still that marriage that's in turmoil. That husband, all he wants is peace in the home. And that wife, all she wants is the husband to come home. I tell you this here today, church. Don't let this thing distract us. We must remember there's people that are hurting and they need you. We have the answer. How many of you believe we have the answer and His name's Jesus? We have the answer. Let us not forget that. That there's people that are hurting and broken hearted and Christ Jesus has the healing. Amen. He can heal the broken hearted. He can restore. He can bless. Number four, I got to hurry. <clears throat> remember the suffering, the strangers, the saints. But also remember this right here in verse number four. The Bible says, the marriage is honorable. Now my voice is about to go, so y'all forgive me on this here. But this is just happening, and I know it is. I've been preaching long enough. It's about to go. <clears throat> but we're going to preach anyway. Hey, Amen. Verse number 4, the Bible says marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Now's the time for us to be mindful and recall to our minds and not forget, church, that we still live for God's stamp of approval. 
I'm not living for the approval of man. But I'm living for the approval of God. He said the marriage bed is honorable. That's what pleases God. <clears throat> That's what makes God happy. That's what brings a smile unto His face. That's what brings glory unto Him. Amen. This thing of shacking up, it ain't right. This thing of living in fornication, it is sin. God Almighty said, I want you, the bride of Christ, the believers, the body, to do those things that are well-pleasing in my sight. We should be living for the approval of God every single day. Not living ungodly, but living holy for His glory, His honor, and His praise. Live. Don't forget about His approval. Amen. Don't look for man's approval. Don't look for a council's approval. Look for God's approval. For that, my dear friends, all that matters. Because as I said before, and I'll say it again, you're going to stand before God. You're not going to stand before man. And every single one of us will give an account unto the Lord. Number five, and I'm done. <clears throat> Let us now remember. Remember the saints. Remember the strangers. Remember the suffering. Remember the stamp of approval of God, approval on your life. But also remember, verse number five, submit to authority. Oh, I know. We might not like that point, but it's still in the Bible. Amen. And verse number five, it says, no, I'm sorry, rather, and, and we see this right here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> verse number seven, remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Now's not the time for anarchy. It is the time, church, for us to be in unity. It's not time to sling mud or throw stones. But it's time to do what? Let brotherly love continue there. We are to submit to authority. You read Romans chapter 13. It was still there before coronavirus. Amen. You ain't got to say amen. I'll say it myself. Amen. Romans chapter 13 tells us that we are to submit to those that are authority because why? All authority has been given by God. Amen. But also may I remind you not just this governmental authority but also the pastoral authority. Right? We, we are right here in Hebrews chapter 13 verse number 17. The Bible tells the church to submit to those that are in authority over them. Say, preacher, you're boasting, you're lifting up yourself. I didn't elaborate on that verse of Scripture. I just told you what it said, friend. And I appreciate those of you that respect this position and respect me as well. Because I know that I'll give an account of all that I say and how I lead this church. I love you with all of my heart, and I hope you know that there. And church, what I want... It's for you to be right with God in everything that you do. For that's what matters. May we remember. May we remember to submit to the authority. As I'm concluding this here, let us remember. Now I'll ask you this question. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten about God? Have you forgotten about what God Almighty has done for you? Will you ask Him, Lord, take me down memory lane. Oh, I praise His holy name. He took us down memory lane the other day and showed us where we were when He found us. Oh, I'm so glad God will find you where you're at. Amen. I'm so glad that He'll find you whether if you're on the church pew, He'll find you whether if you're at the trash can, He'll find you whether if you're in a car, Hallelujah, the Lord will find you. And when He finds you there, my dear friend, he said, I'll cast you not. I won't cast you out. All that come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. And I'm glad on that day when he found me and I found him. Oh, happy day. All my sins were washed away. May God take us down that memory lane of remembering the power of God in our lives. Of how we've seen God answer prayers. And how we've seen God perform miracles. I'm telling you, it's the same God. Did we not read that here? And verse number 8, Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Remember the Lord and who He is. What He can do. What He has done. May I remind you of who God is today. He's the sinner Savior. He's the honorable one. He's the promise keeper. And He's faithful. He's faithful to His children. I'm telling you the same God. He's holy and righteous. May I remind you as well of who you are. You're His possession, child of God. You belong to God. 
You don't belong to yourself. Say, preacher, I refuse to believe that. Well, you go read over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 then. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 19 and 20 tells us that what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Verse number 20 tells us that we've been bought. We've been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not your own. So quit treating your life like it is. Quit treating yourself like you, pol you belong to yourself because you belong to God. May I remind you, God possesses you. God Almighty, the Holy Spirit of God, dwells inside of you. I'm so grateful and thankful that He does. As my dear friend, sometimes we feel like we're all alone, but we're not. He's there. Sometimes we feel like there's no one to talk to, but there is, because He's there. I'm reminding you this today of who you are. You're His possession. You're His place, His temple of dwelling. You are the people of God if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Do you know Him this morning? Do you? Say, preacher, I'm here at church. Isn't that proof enough that I know Jesus? Nope. No, it's not, friend. You've got to answer that not to me but unto God. Do you know Him? Now see, He knows you. He knows where you live at. He knows what you're going through. He knows your street address. He knows how old you are. He knows how tall you are, how much you weigh. Oh, oh, oh. He knows all about you. He knows what's going on, on the inside. He knows your thought process right now. Matter of fact, I'm even tell you this here. He knows whether you listen to the Word of God this morning or not. He knows where if you're on your cell phone. Some of you are. I guarantee you are right now. You've been playing those games. You've been scrolling through Facebook. You've been looking at other stuff you should not be looking at while we're trying to give to you the Word of God. And God sees you. He knows what you're doing. He knows whether if you're His or you're not. He knows and He'll tell you is what I'm getting to. The Holy Ghost of God will speak to your heart and reveal unto you that you're a child of God or you are not. The Scriptures, the Word of God will reveal unto you that you're a child of God or you're not. Do you know Him? There may be somebody right here sitting in your car say, Preacher, I don't know Him. I don't know Him. I've just been playing these games. I've been fooling mom and dad. I've been fooling my spouse. But I can't fool God. I don't know Him. I'm lost. I know I'm lost. I know I need to repent of my sins. I need to trust in Christ and Him alone. i got good news for you, friend. He'll meet you where you're at. All you have to do is just pray. Call unto Him. Say, Preacher, what should I pray? Lord, You're holy. You're God. And You love me. Thank You for loving me that You sent Jesus to die on the cross. I realize I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. I call on your name to save me today. He'll do that. If you pray, repent of your sins, and trust in Jesus Christ, He'll save you today. Church, do you know God? Do you know the power of God? Church, may we not forget. Let us remember now more than ever let us remember God. Let us remember the Word of God. Let us remember the things of God. May we take hold of this now, church, and ignite our faith by the Holy Spirit of God reviving us and reminding us of who God is and who we are as well. I pray the Lord's blessings be upon you. I appreciate every single one of you. Love you. Thank you for being here today. Let us remember. Don't let us forget. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we love you. I'm amazed that you love us. Lord, I thank you for just allowing us to just talk to you right now as well. It's so humbling, Lord, just to even say that I belong to you. Lord, I thank you that you found me wages of my sins and Lord you found me in my filthy rags and Lord you accepted me just as I was Lord you forgave me when I asked 
Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you for the precious promises and the truths that's in the Word of God. And Lord, I do thank you at this time. I thank you at this time, Lord, for everyone that is gathered to hear the Word of God. Thank you for Westfield Creek Baptist Church. I thank you for the family that is here today. I pray your blessings upon them. I pray for the ones that lost right now that needs to be saved. Father, that they're asking you right now. Right now. They're praying. They're asking God. Lord, they're asking you to save their soul. Father, may we never forget who you are and what you told us to remember and what you told us to do. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen.